work ethic. As a family, we've been reading through the book of Proverbs, and uh, biblical work ethic really struck my mind. Something America has recently started to lack, society, is proper work ethic. Mm. To remedy this, many career schools and colleges make work ethic as your, a part of your overall grade. Our local career center does 20% of our overall grade, just how good your work ethic is. However, the problem is still not solved. Um, no matter how hard a teacher or your boss tries to keep a student's or worker's work ethic in check, it still starts with you, the worker, or the student. And regardless if you've you've come to the faith and trusted in Jesus, the biblical book of Proverbs has provided us with many examples of work ethic. It shows us, the book of Proverbs shows us many examples of how a Christian should act towards his boss. And the Bible really gives a lot too, but the Proverbs have a lot to do with that. So, I'm going to bring out six points today just relating biblical work ethic. I want you to ask yourself, how can these apply to me, and how can I fix this, and how can I become a better worker? I once heard my teacher say you can control two things, your work ethic and your attitude. Mm -hmm. Now, point number one for work ethic. Worth ethic, worth ethic starts in the home, proper discipline. Go to uh, Proverbs 29. The majority of our uh, references will be in the book of Proverbs. I may have one or two that's not, but go to Proverbs chapter 29. book of Proverbs 29 and uh, verse 17 says correct thy son and he shall give thee rest yea he shall give delight unto thy soul when you're when a child goes to work this verse is essentially saying that a parent should be at rest knowing that they trained him or her well um my teacher, whenever we were at school, gave us an example of his son who went into the military. Many of you guys know that the military is very, or at least the Marines, um, is very strict for young men. And, uh, of course, the drill sergeant especially. And uh, it's dumbed down a bit, but it's still pretty strict. And... My teacher's son, he went there and he was, uh, he was getting hammered and whipped into shape by the uh, drill sergeant. And that guy had one thing in mind whenever he saw just how bad the drill sergeant is. He laughed in his head and said, ha, you are not nothing like my dad. And it's because he trained, my teacher isn't a Christian, but he had trained him to have a good work ethic, and uh, oh, how to treat your boss, how to treat people in general. One of one of my other teachers, he always complains about how the kids act in the class, and uh, he's always saying that all the time he notices that all the students who have a good work ethic have one thing in common: their parents. It all started in the home, he told me, because he's been teaching for about 40 years. And he told me everything they all had in common was their parents had taught them how to act in a workplace. Now, schools will try to teach, and sometimes it does, but it all starts in the home. 
Proverbs 13, 24 makes a claim that, quote, He that spareth the rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him three times. That's in Proverbs 13.4. Now, to move on to point number two of work ethic. We all know that one stereotype of a worker who always talks, and he's not working like he's supposed to, but he's just, well, running his jib, as my teacher says. And believe it or not, this type of worker is found in the book of Proverbs. If you go to Proverbs 14, 23. Look at Proverbs, and uh, verse 23 says, In all labor there is profit, but in the talk of the lips tendeth only to pendry. And uh, so basically what this verse means is the guy who works hard, there's a profit to be made. But if all you do is talk, poverty will come. No boss likes a worker who's just talking. Um, a happy boss will lead to a happy life at work. You can't be talking all the time you're working, and the book of Proverbs addresses this stereotype of worker. And point number three of work ethic, um, Proverbs 12, verse 24, book of Proverbs, Verse 24 says, The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. So this verse tells us that those who work hard will be put in charge of others, while those who are lazy will be like slaves. Um, no one ever becomes rich by being lazy or nice. And my teacher once told me something that has always sticked out to me. He said, always want your boss's job. And uh, you know, being lazy won't get you your boss's job. Working hard not only make you a living, as we learned earlier, but you'll be promoted, chances are. And uh, of course, I want to stop here and remind you something, that the book of Proverbs is not a promise book. It's, um, it's a book that gives you um, advice for how to live your life. And um, a lot of this advice may not come true. There's always wealth by well, being in a family, um, having wealth drop down to you, but chances are you'll never get anywhere by being lazy. Even if, even if you're lazy, someone had to work for the money that you get. And that's really what I want to bring out today is how to, is that you need to work hard to get that, and the book of Proverbs really brings that out. Now, let's go back to always wanting your boss's job. This does two things. One, it promotes you as a worker to work twice as hard and to prove to your company that you are leadership material. Number two, typically getting higher management gets higher pay, therefore providing more income for you, children, and uh, grandchildren. I was reading the other day in Proverbs 13.22 where it talks about living an inheritance. Now that inheritance can be anything from a good example of you to material things. Or the, the book of Proverbs isn't clear, but it says to leave an inheritance for your children and your children's children. And most people, whenever they think of inheritance,
inheritance, they think of money, but that's not always the case, but that is an inheritance. Now, let's go on to point four of biblical work ethic. In the book of Proverbs, again, verse or chapter 21 and uh, verse 25, the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 25, notes, the de says, quote, The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. <sighs> Lazy people naturally have, naturally make out their own problems in life. Anxiety, depression, death, and uh, because they refuse to work. I see a lot of homeless people, and uh, the thing is, homeless people, there's a lot more homeless people in America, and it shouldn't be that way. America is one of the easiest places to get a job. I'm not saying that you have to be at a job that pays well. I'm just saying that laziness won't get you anywhere. It'll go, it'll bring you, it'll bring you to, as this book of Proverbs says in 21 verse 25, the desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. I see a lot of homeless people. Um, Whenever we would drive to school, there would always be the same person there. Now, I don't know this story. It could be a war veteran and seriously can't work. But there are some people who just want a handout from the government. And if the government would stop giving handouts, a lot of people would stop being lazy. But this book of Proverbs really tells you really gives warnings against being lazy and hate to admit it but a lot of people in America are lazy and having a good work ethic will help young workers old workers will help you strive to learn therefore taking the inherent laziness out you don't have to learn to be lazy Humans by nature are meant to be active, but the Bible really warns against being lazy. Now, point number five. Someone with a good work ethic is uh, reliable and dependable. Whether you're a welder, machinist, computer scientist, sales clerk, chances are you will have a deadline to meet. A deadline is whenever your boss gives you a certain amount of time to complete one project. Now, as Christians, we're to be a good example of Christ and His church at work. Um, one of the things I've heard of is whenever your boss sees how hard you work, and he knows you're a Christian, that will be a good way to witness to him because he'll say, wow, you have such a great work ethic, where does it come from? You tell him, my parents and the Bible. That's a good witness point to tell him, and not only is it that you're giving a good report of your last name, but you're giving a good example of Jesus, of Christ. Having a bad work ethic is not something a Christian should be. It's not something anyone should be, but especially the Christian, because time after time we are told in the book of Proverbs that we are supposed to have a good work ethic, although it may not say it in those words, but by the verses we know that we're supposed to have a good work ethic. No boss likes any worker that isn't dependable. You know, if you're always showing up to late, work late, um, you can be nice to him as possible, but if you're not 
working good, you're not going to get promoted. In fact, you probably get fired. But and the thing is, um, I've seen a lot of people are looking for a job, are looking for people to work um, at our career center. Those who graduate after four years of high school welding, very few actually leave the career college without getting a job somewhere. Because so many people are looking for, for workers. So many employers, business owners, need workers in. You know, don't be upset if you don't get paid a lot. Have a good work ethic, and I'm sure that will come. Having a good work ethic strives you to learn. And learning more will get you better at the job. And it gives a good example and helps you be nice to people whenever you are in your workforce, whether you are dealing with customers, always treating them with kindness and treating your boss and coworkers with kindness. It's already really embarrassing to see a 16-year-old man act like a child whenever he's at work. But it's even more embarrassing to see a Christian 16-year-old act like a child at work. Your boss is paying you to work, not slack around. And as a Christian, we are to be better than, we are to be a better at work ethic, so we should really strive to do that. Now, my last point, um, point, point number six. Now, this one is not in the book of Proverbs. It's in Mark 10, 19. It has a Jesus, whenever he was um, repeating some of the Ten Commandments, he said, and you can go there, but Mark 10, 19 says, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal. And we'll just stop the verse there. Jesus made it clear that at least those Ten Commandments are to be repeated. And there's other verses that Ten Commandments are supposed to be. But he repeats those. Now, I've just given you a quote by Jesus Christ not to steal. One of the crimes in the workforce... And it's a serious um, thing against work ethic. But one of the crimes in the workforce is called time theft. Time theft is illegal, but very hard to prove it has actually happened. Um, taking longer lunch breaks, arriving to work late, um, leaving work early, um, or using or just taking breaks during company time are all examples of time theft. You see, time theft occurs whenever your boss is paying you to work and you aren't working. It doesn't matter whether you're a desk job or a welder or, a, or any metalworking business. Time theft is a serious problem. Um, the Holy Bible tells us that the government was placed by God and the powers were given by God. And the reference for that is in Romans. Um, yeah, it's in Romans. I don't know if I wrote it down or not. Uh, Romans 13 verses 1 through 2. And uh, in there, God tells us that the government was given by God. Um, and of course, in Colossians, we know that everything is made by God and for God. And um, the government was placed by God. And uh, the powers of the government were given by God. Now, anyone who does something illegal is in violation of the book of Romans, chapter 13. Verses 1 through 2. Time theft is something that's 
common, not just in America, but really everywhere. And uh, time theft is, to conclude, time theft is wrong because it's going against the commandment, thou shalt not steal, Exodus 20, 15. And uh, it goes against what God told us in Romans, because it is illegal. Um, and if anyone wants the reference points for the uh, stuff, I'll be happy to give you the footnotes. Um, but as a conclusion, the book of Proverbs gives us many uh, examples of a good work ethic. And, you know, it's embarrassing to see Americans act like children at work, but it is even more as a Christian American. And uh, that's really just what I wanted to bring out today. So, I hope it's been a blessing. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed it.